It's that time of the year. We're talking about March Mammal Madness, and this is The Rundown. Bringing you all the highlights of the tournament, I am Lion, and I am joined by my co-host, Giraffe. Great to be here, Lion! And it was an incredible night of elite trait action across all the divisions. And the elite trait round is when we get to the random habitats. Here to tell us more is great friend of the show, Octopus! Greetings, landlubbers! Tonight, the better-seated combatants no longer have home habitat advantage, and instead will encounter each other in one of four possible random habitats. These are the Temperate Broadleaf Forest, Sea Cave, Geothermal Wetlands, or Sky Islands! Sky islands are forested areas at high elevations that are surrounded by the seas of desert scrub ecosystems. The plants and animals of these ecosystems can be as isolated as islands surrounded by ocean. The different combatants of the elite trait may do better or worse in an encounter depending on which random habitat they draw. This could be one wild ride. Exciting. Let's get into it. Tonight, the Ginkgo and Rizzo face off against the Alligator Gar in the randomly selected habitat of Sky Islands, specifically the Santa Catalina Mountains of Southern Arizona. Ginkgo and Rizzo, best friends, are magically translocated over a mile high to mixed conifer forest where the soil depth is deepest. But not deep enough for the vertical root system Ginkgo needs to be stable. Roots crushed against the bedrock. The tree starts teetering. On the forest floor, alligator gar is flip-flopping around in the ponderosa pine needles. Gills gasping uselessly. Wham! I'm yelling, timber! Ginkgo falls, crushing alligator gar. Alligator gar eliminated! A fish out of water and a tree out of soil. Next up, Puma took on Attics in the Temperate Broadleaf Forest, specifically the 650,000 acre Cherokee National Forest, the largest tract of public land in Tennessee. Magically translocated to the shadows, Puma silently pads to perch on a rock next to Attics and leaps into a tree branch above the hooved mammal. Smelling the felid predator, Addix panics, but in the thick force gets horns and hooves caught in the foliage. Puma watches the Addix struggle and then falls asleep for a cat nap because Puma is still digesting yesterday's saiga. But the force and the felid scent are too much and Addix flees the field of battle. Addix eliminated. <laughs> Puma almost eliminated by the meat sweats. <laughs> Um, well, yes. Well, the scientific term is diet-induced thermogenesis. On that note, we have another great friend of the show back to chat. Welcome, Boar! Really? This guy again? Ah, big kitty. Does someone need a nap? Quite the opposite. Someone needs a snack. Ixnay on doing that in front of the audience. Cut it out. Tonight, Sun Bear and Gelada translocate to the geothermal wetlands, specifically the world's first national park, Yellowstone. Here, thousands of geothermal features, including hot springs, geysers, and mud pots, both strangers in a strange land. Gelada and Sun Bear look at each other through the steam and the fumes and withdraw from any battling. Gelada heads towards the hillside, but the tropical sun bear steps towards warmer and warmer microclimates. The ground is warming his paws when his back foot breaks through the mineral crust into a boiling hot spring. Burning his claws and part of a paw, sun bear runs into a gulch. And drops dead. Gas emissions from the underground geothermal activity have released carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide into the gully and quickly kill the ursid. Sun bear eliminated. They don't call it Death Gully for nothing, folks. Always follow park guidance and stay on trails and boardwalks around geothermal activity. Last battle of the night. 
After a recent encounter with a predatory orca, Narwhal swims close to the ice of the Barrow Strait in the high Arctic. As polar bear watches from the ice, still consuming yesterday's Cape Buffalo. R.I.P. Herbivore. Polar bear knows that a carcass in the paw is worth more than a swimming whale in the water. When the orca chases Narwhal toward the polar bear and magic translocates the polar bear and Narwhal to the geothermal wetlands. Specifically, the Tororonga geothermal system adjacent to the Bay of Plenty in New Zealand. Still fearful of the possibly lurking orca, Narwhal makes use of the shallow water where the warm spring waters flow into the lagoon. The narwhal gets caught on a submerged, muddy sand flat. Narwhal is beached and vulnerable. Seeing the narwhal stranded in the shallow pool, Polar Bear recalculates the odds of a successful hunt and moves in fast for a feast. After all, spring is the main gorging season of Polar Bears. Narwhal eliminated! Polar Bear, Gingo, and Rizzo, Puma, and Cinderella Gelada advance to the final roar next episode. Until next time, good night and good luck. Remember, in March Mammal Madness, if you're learning, you're winning. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Huh? Yeah! Yeah, March Mammal Madness, it's going down. 65 species from all around. Thurl's deer, polar bear, taking the crown. Adax and Ginkgo, they're battle bound. If you're learning, you're winning. What? Species battling, no one spinning. Home habitats, the first round spin. But traits take over when the league begins. Zorilla, flying snake, they're coming through. Moon rat and fern got something to prove. Tree of life, they're fighting for the throne. Who's gonna make this tournament their own? First three rounds, home field's your friend. But elite trade, final roar, that's where legends send. Number one seeds might fall today. Unexpected champs gonna have their say. If you're learning, you're winning. What? Species battling, no one spinning. Out. Survival skills put to the test. March Mammal Madness, who's the best? 65 and a, but only one stage. March Mammal Madness, scientific ways. Yeah. Mm-hmm.